In the last few lectures, we created the user model using which we were able to create users in the database. And we also implemented the logic to encrypt the user password before saving it in the database. Now, it's time to implement user authentication and authorization. In simple words, we are going to implement the whole workflow of logging the user in and allowing them to interact with certain protected resources in our application that non-logged in user cannot access. Now, there are many authentication methods out there, but the one which we are going to use is very modern, simple and secure approach, which is called as JSON Web Token or JWT in short. JSON Web Tokens are stateless solution for authentication. That means no session state is stored on the server and that is perfect for RESTful APIs like the one which we are building. Because if you remember, we have learned that RESTful API should always be stateless. And there is also alternatives to JWT. And the most widely used alternative to authentication with JWTs is to just store the user login state on the server using sessions. But that does not follow the principle of RESTful API, which says the RESTful API should be stateless. And that's why we are opting for the solution like JWT. So let's now take a look at how authentication works with JSON Web Token. So here we have a client and a server. And assuming that we already have some users in the database, let's see how a user is authenticated when he tries to log into an app. So the user's client starts by making a POST request to the server with username or email and the password. The application then checks if the user exists and if the password is correct. So if the user exists and if his password is correct, in that case, a unique JSON web token only for that user is created using a secret string that is stored on the server. Okay, so on the server, a secret string gets stored. Keep this point in mind because this is very important and we are going to understand why it is important later in this lecture. Now, JSON Web Token itself, it is also just a string which looks something like this. And again, we will talk about this JSON Web Token in more detail later in this lecture. All right, so from the client, we made a login request with email and password to the server. On the server, it is checking if the user exists and if the password is correct. In that case, it is going to create a unique JWT, which looks something like this. And it is also going to create a secret string, which will be stored on the server. Once that is done, the server will then send this JWT. So basically this string back to the client. And there it will be stored either in cookie or in the local storage. Now this JSON web token, which is stored on the client, it will act like an identity proof for the user to get access to the protected routes. And in this way, the user is authenticated and basically logged into the application without leaving any state on the server. So the server does not know which user are actually logged in. But of course, the user knows that he is logged in because he has a valid JSON web token. Now, just to make sure that you understand, a user is logged in as soon as he gets back his unique valid web token on the client, which is not saved anywhere on the server. And this process is therefore completely stateless. Now, once the user is logged in, each time he wants to access a protected route, for example, his user profile data, the client sends that JSON web token along with the request. Okay, so you can see when the user is trying to access his user profile, along with the request, he is also sending this JSON web token to the server. So it's a bit like showing his identity proof to get access to the protected resource. Now, once the request hits the server, our app will then verify if the JSON web token is valid or not. And we will understand how this verification works a bit later in this lecture. Okay. Now, if the token is valid, then the requested data will be sent back to the client. But if the token is not valid, then there will be an error telling the user that he is not allowed to access that resource. And also, as long as the user is logged in, this is how it's going to work each time that he requests a data from any protected route. Now, the important point to note here is that all this request and response communication must happen using HTTPS protocol, basically using a secure and encrypted HTTP request and responses. And this is important to prevent anyone from getting access to password or JSON web token. Only then we have a really secure system. And we will talk about that later in this section. And this basic knowledge is all you need to know in order to implement authentication using JWT. 
But let's now dive a little bit deeper on how the JWT itself actually works. A JSON web token looks something like this. Now we can take a JWT from JWT debugger at JWT.io. Essentially, JWT is an encoding string made up of three parts. So here in the left hand side, you can see the JWT string, basically the encoded JWT string. And if we decode it, it consists of three parts. It consists of header. Header is just a metadata about the token itself. Basically, it is a JSON string which contains the type, which in this case is JWT and the algorithm which is being used. Okay, so this highlighted string in the JSON web token is basically the header. Then we have the payload. Payload is the data that we want to encode into the token. It can be any data that we want. And the more data we want to encode here, the bigger the JWT will be. So in this encoded JWT, this purple part is basically the payload. So the header and the payload, these are the two parts that are just plain text that will get encoded but not encrypted. So anyone will be able to decode them and then read them. So we cannot store any sensitive data in here. But that's not a problem at all. Because in the third part, which is signature, this is where everything gets interesting. This highlighted blue part is basically the signature. The signature is created using this header, this payload, and also the secret string which is saved on the server. Remember that when we made the login request for the first time, a secret string was created on the server and it was saved on the server. So this signature part here of this JSON web token, it is a combination of this header, this payload, and that secret string which is saved on the server. And all this process is called as signing the JSON web token. Let's try to understand the signing process in a bit depth. So as we learned, the signing algorithm takes the header, the payload and the secret string to create a unique signature. Then together with the header and payload, the signature forms the JWT, which then gets sent to the client. So we learned that the JWT, which gets created by the application that gets sent to the client and is stored in the cookie or in the local storage of the client. But the main point to note here is that this signature is created using the header and the payload. So basically this header and the payload and the secret string which is saved on the server. So using this, this signature is created. Now this signature combined with this header and payload, again it creates the JWT. So this is very important. Signature combined with header and payload creates the JWT. So what does JWT contains? It contains the header, it contains the payload, and it contains a signature. So now, when the client will make a request to access a protected resource of the app, for example, the user profile, with the request, we are also sending the JWT. And this JWT, when it will be received by the server, it will use this JWT to provide access to the protected routes to the user. But before that, it will verify it in order to determine if the user really is who he claims to be. In other words, it will verify that no one changed the header and the payload data of the token. So in simple words, this verification step will check if no third party actually altered either the header or the payload of the JSON web token. Now, how does this verification actually works? Well, it's actually quite straightforward. So once the JWT is received, the verification will take its header and the payload and together with the secret that is still saved on the server. So we know that this JSON web token, it is consist of three parts, header, signature and payload. So from this JWT, it will take the header and the payload and this secret string, it is already saved on the server. So combining all these three, it is going to create a test signature. But the original signature that was generated when the JWT was first created, basically this signature that is still present in the token. So again, a token consists of the header, the payload and the signature. And how does this signature is created? It is created using the header, payload and the secret string, right? In the same way on the server, we already have this secret string stored. From the JWT, we are taking the header and the payload and then we are creating a 
test signature from the JWT. We took its header and payload, but this JWT also has this signature. So now all we have to do is we have to compare this test signature with the original signature. And if the test signature is same as the original signature, that means the payload and the header has not been modified because if they are modified, then the test signature would have to be different from the original signature. So if both signature and test signature is same, we can then authenticate the user. Otherwise, if they are different, that means someone tempered with the data, usually by trying to change the payload. So in that case, we would not authenticate the user because in that case, the test signature will be different from the original signature. So in that case, we will not authenticate the user. And this is the key of making this whole system work. It's this implementation which makes JWT simple but extremely powerful. In summary, without the secret, no one will be able to manipulate the JWT data because they cannot create a valid signature for that data without the secret string which is saved on this server. Now, if the user is authenticated, then the requested data will be sent back to the client. Otherwise, an error will be sent back to the client saying that you are not authenticated to access this resource. Okay. Now, we are not going to implement these JWT algorithms by ourselves. They are very complex and we are not going to reinvent the wheel here. But still, it is very important to understand how this whole process works behind the scenes. And I hope with this lecture, you have some idea of how it is going to work internally. This is all from this lecture. From the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's start implementing authentication and authorization in our Express app. Thank you for listening and have a great day.